You're listening to the Soju Talk Nation podcast, episode 47. In today's episode, Zondi and Nina return to discuss May in Soju Talk music for our monthly recap show. So sit back and chill with friends. You're listening to the after show with the Soju Talk Nation. Welcome to the Soju Talk Nation podcast, a chill discussion on this month in the Soju Talk Nation. We're recording on Saturday, June 4th, 2022. I'm your host, Crispy, and returning to the show, um, a new cat owner, one who has an enormous heart, um, a great, big, giant, beautiful heart, as beautiful as her exterior, the one and only... Nina, welcome to the show, Nina. You can't see me, but just know that I'm shaking my head at you. <laughs> You're shaking your head as, as, um, <laughs> as just, you know, shock of the uh, accuracy <laughs> of, of my description of, of who you, what your soul is and what, what you look like on the outside. Um, <laughs> joining us is a, a party animal, um, an influencer of sorts, a person who has a great reach to at least 10 people. The one and only Zondi. Welcome to the show, sir. Hello. I'm still cringing at your use of the word exterior. <laughs> exterior. <laughs> you like that? Yeah. We're going to talk no, about a I lot of it. exteriors <laughs> today. Am I right? I have no idea where that was going, but we're here. We're here, guys. <laughs> All right. Well, um, Nina and Zondi are back. As usual, to do our monthly recap in Soju Talk Music. Um, May is over. We're in June. It's summertime. So we're going to review. We're going to recap. We're going to talk about our top three favorite songs in the Soju Talk Nation, in the Soju Talk Music. Um, <laughs> we're, we're just going to go over our favorite songs. And then if there are any overlaps, we'll uh, get some alternates. So we may do three songs. We may nine songs we may do like a hundred songs i don't know um but we've, we've got a lot of things to talk about because uh, uh we've got some special songs this month so we will start with nina what is your number three song for the month of may 2022 perfect yeah my number three song is woods i hate you what to say about woods <laughs> um i mean i don't know if i've talked about this before but as a preteen i was a pop punk fan like through and through um so i love the the throwbacks the pop punks it's some people like think it's a little bit cheesy i appreciate that woods went all in on this concept <laughs> he committed to the, the the emo pop punk look from the video to his outfits to everything um and i i just thought this song was so much fun um i'm i love woods i love his voice he's got one of my favorite voices in k-pop it's like very high and clear and i just like to listen to it um and i was yeah i was overjoyed to see him do a just a cheesy fun pop punk song and uh yeah i had a lot of fun with this one nothing says the 90s and early 2000s more than <laughs> a fish-eyed lens rotating <laughs> in an art gallery abstract museum situation um i was very shocked by this music video in a lot of ways shocked and surprised pleasantly surprised because he leans into it so much it's just this complete like time capsule of what the early 2000s were like as far as the music um the the edgy rebellion feel of it it's like the world is so hard and i'm going to rebel because of everything um what did you think about the imagery of this music video zondi um he did some really cool things with just like wrapping himself in paper and putting himself in a box but you know rebel against authority can't put me in a box um, the plastic is... bag outfit <laughs> in the elevator it's just perfect <laughs> shot um, zondi have you ever rebelled against the world by putting yourself in a plastic bag uh, in a on a constant basis really yeah i i, I... <laughs> I I really like this song as well. This is my number three as well. Nice. Uh, and I mean, I disagree with everything Nina said. Uh, <laughs> the the imagery in the music video is, I mean, at the worst, it's very funny. 
Uh, the the plastic bag in the elevator. I think I think Sai has ruined elevators in K-pop for me. <laughs> so I that's all I think about. But uh, yeah, I, like don't know. There's a lot of cool imagery. Mouthful of blood. I mean, there's a lot of very tropey things happening. The the bassist with the the big spiky hair. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a lot going on. It's it's very evocative of that kind of era of pop rock uh but it's it's leaned into really well i think it's done in a very fun way i like the pre-chorus a lot a lot the percussion syncopated percussion is really nice also like how they play with that in the music video with the metronomes Uh, i like how it slows down right in the middle of the chorus i think that's really fun it breaks up the chorus really well woods's voice is really good i don't know there's a lot that I liked about the song. So yeah, it's also my number three. Syncopated. This is why we have you on, Zon. You are, yeah, Zondi's the musical expert. Right? He's just so technical, mm-hmm. so intelligent. <laughs> God, I'm like, so songs awesome. sound good in my ears. And song Zondi's good. like, so anyway, in the pre-chorus. <laughs> song make me think of my childhood, my youth. Yeah. yeah, it's it's like a it's a happy nostalgia. <laughs> it really is. Um I Watching it at first, and he's just a very he 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 himself looks like you plucked him out of the early two thousands because he is like he's a fairly young person, but then the way that he was styled and costumed and just kind of thrown into like the setting, this museum with just glass everywhere, but then nobody's there, and then like these abstract um, art installations that were like on the floor, then like on the wall, then you can interact with them. A lot of interactive art. Um, it was, it, it all came together in a very simple way. And I think mm-hmm. it's, it's a really good example of um, doing a lot with a little because it, it didn't really require like these, this over the top budget as far as what it looked like. Um, I, I would have to shout out all, all the underneath shots. Um, mm-hmm. I think so. That's yeah, that's very that's very nineties, early two thousands. Yeah, right. it's a cool <laughs> shot because so the way that's done is it's a glass like floor or a glass like thing that the artist will stand on, and then they'll just bring the camera underneath, and mm. it's just like it, it's it's such a nineties shot. It's like God, okay, we're doing this. Um, shout out to the band. Um, really mm-hmm. cool that they were in a lot of shots together with Woods. Um, because for a soloist, you would think that. It's like it's he's the primary focus, but no, he did a nice job of incorporating himself with the band to make you feel the nineties, feel the two thousands. All all good things coming together with this. Um, and you know, written and composed by Woods. I just think he's a musical genius, honestly. <laughs> he's got well, a big brain. Well, we'll t- talk about that. So, written and composed by Woods. Um, kind of what mm-hmm. is the effect of that with a song like this and? I'm not super familiar with Woods, but I would have known if he did a song like this in the past. Um, what has his, mm. his, what has been his style um, previously? I mean, he's been he's done so many different genres um, before uh, produce X One Hundred One and X One and all that. He he was more R and B. Um, he did like a lot of chill R and B type stuff, um, very vibey, um, and then. He came back with Love Me Harder, which was a, not like a pop punk, but kind of a rock style song. Um, he, yeah, he, he, um, I just lost Crispy. <laughs> oh, where'd he go? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but no, he, he writes all of his own stuff and he does so many different styles. And I think he does them all really well. I'm just, I'm a really big Woods fan. Um, I had to close my window. That is why, but I had my headphones on, so I heard everything. No, um, that was a great description of all of the sounds. The thing is, like, a, a, an artist like this who has just a lot of variety in his bag is, um, I think unique in a lot of ways because in K pop, you want consistency, right? You want people to get acclimated to your style, your sound, um, and kind of what you put forward. The fact that, like, this to me, this came out of nowhere, and it's like, wow, okay, I get we're doing this. Um, and I, I'm just excited if one, he continues with, on with this genre or two, if he does something completely different and how does that look like and sound like? Yeah, he's definitely been more rock inspired, like feel like was his last comeback and that it wasn't, uh, it wasn't rock per se, but it had a lot of electric guitars and that kind of thing. So I, I, I really like the use of, um, you know, real instruments in pop music. <laughs> I love to see it. Yeah. Let's bring that back. 
it's got some yeah. in it. Yeah. At least in the um, in, in yeah, the, nothing against you know EDM. I like that too, but <laughs> yeah, or at least in, like the love music that. video. Right? Love a good guitar. Where yeah, it feels real, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Zondi, any closing thoughts you have on Woods and um, you know being put in the time capsule of the two thousands? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I really like the song. Obviously, since I put it number three, uh, I want to comment on the the stage dressing for the live stages. Really reminds me of, uh, as well as the themes of the song, like the lyrics, uh, very cheesy, obviously, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Both of them remind me of uh, maybe my favorite song of this year, which is Luck to You by Yena, which is also <laughs> another, you know, pop, pop rock, pop punk inspired song. But uh, especially, I think the stages do remind me of that. And I love the choreo for this as well. Uh, same company, actually. They're both underway, huh, right? Yeah, they would be, yeah. So it makes sense. Interesting. Yeah, maybe they just point. use the same sets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'd, that'd be great. Yana and Woods collaboration, end of year stage. Mm. Please, Love to see it. Fuck to see it? Yeah. What? No, that's wrong. That's not good. That doesn't work. <laughs> no, okay. that's not how it works. We're, we're going we're gonna to move on. Zondi, what is your number three song of May? My number three song of May 2022 is I Hate You by Woods. But we've already <laughs> talked about that. So I'm going to talk about another song. Uh, uh, there's a lot of songs this month that were pretty good. So I'll just choose one. I liked Candy Sugar Pop by Astro, actually. Mm. I thought it was a sleeper hit for this month. Uh, the Bubblegum Pop boy group does a Bubblegum Pop song, and I re- I liked it. I thought it was really good. The chorus, especially, is a really big highlight for me. Uh, I, I wrote Red Velvet style unison chorus. I thought it was really, really good. It's very fun. Nothing too crazy, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, Nina, what did you think about this song? And we, we haven't seen this in a minute. Um, and I feel like more groups should do it. But I love when Retro goes to Miami Vice. And it leads into like summer kind of perfectly. Um, how do you feel about, you know, this song and the visual component of kind of bringing to life the uh, candy and the sugar and the pop? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a bubblegum pop boy group enthusiast, definitely. And I think Astro... Do it really, really well. They they know to have, to have fun. Um, yeah, it's um, they they did a song last year called was it before midnight or after midnight? It was one of those. Um, <laughs> At some point around yeah. midnight. <laughs> yeah, it was either before or after midnight, um, and that was also kind of like a bright song. But I I think this is actually like an improved version of uh, of that song because clearly I can't remember the name of that one. Um, yeah, it's it's a fun. Uh, very retro styling. Love the colors in the video. Yeah, now that you said Miami Vice, <laughs> I love it. I can definitely see that. Yeah, the pinks yeah, and lavenders. Uh, yeah, and the uh, like the CG backgrounds and everything. Very fun. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think Astro know how to good, have a good time. I love their bubblegum top stuff. Having a good time is just like the the one way you can get me into K-pop or a K-pop song <laughs> that I wouldn't normally listen to, or a group that would normally listen to. Um, because again, it's very light. Um, it's perfect for summertime. Um, it came out at the beginning of May. I feel like this this song should have carried a little harder. You know, people should not people should have, but like it, it feels like the conversation died a bit about this song because I I didn't particularly see too much about it. Um, but I I really like it as far as fitting in with the uh, 2022 retro type of songs that came out this year. Um, I keep a running playlist of retro songs the year <laughs> so it just fits right in uh music video wise there's a lot of candy there's a lot of cotton candy there's some donuts um there's you know some pop and colors even the blue and red like just like pop um overall i think mm-hmm. they did a great job um styling and creating the visual language for this song right? because i think um you know it can very easily go off the rails and get a little too cheesy get a little too weird Song like this with um literally just having candy sugar and pop in the title um but i think they did it subtle subtly enough where it's there but it's not like it's overwhelming it's like oh so much sugar like enjoy us i enjoy you a lot yeah and i i agree that the chorus is really like the synth and the trumpets in the chorus stunning great stuff 
<laughs> it's so good. I really yeah. love the chorus. Yeah. You know, any uh, any final thoughts? Yeah. I mean, that pretty much summed it up. It's just a. Uh, sometimes you just want to have a a fun time, a fun, bright, colorful, candy sugar pop time. <laughs> Very aptly named song, I will say. Yeah, really that title is. describes the song. <laughs> I'm I'm watching the studio room, and one of the dudes is wearing a shirt that says "He Him" for Pride Month. So. Oh, happy Pride! That's very nice. <laughs> oh. um. Yeah, that didn't that studio tune come out a couple? Uh, yeah, it was not in June. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but shout out to them if that's like a little uh, forward, forward thinking. Because you know? um, I do feel like this song fits like the entire summer season. Where if it came out a little bit later in May, it would have like had a great momentum into June, July. Uh, but we have it here, and we're still talking about it. So I. I think it it's well done. Well done, everyone. All right. Um we're moving on to uh my number three. If I can get to it. A lot, a lot of notes, guys. All right, number three song. Um it is a girl group. It is the only well not only. It is one of the only girl groups that were talked about on the main show this month. We got Lightsum with Alive. Um man, this song is my favorite lightsome song um listening to it more throughout the week i think i was just uh hungering and thirsting for that's probably like a poor choice of words here um considering they're a rookie group uh for a girl group music <laughs> because mm. I, I initially loved it and now it's like it, it's good but it's not something i would say is like a top girl group song for me of the year but um that's why it landed on number three. Um, I, I kind of like the the setting of the music video where it's kind of telling a story. It's, it's high teen, um, but it's it feels like a movie. It feels like a, a show kind of thing. There, there's a lot of different sets, a lot of different lights, great outfits, um, and it really got me to kind of dig into the different members. So, um, you know, I, I became very much a fan of Nayang and her singing, um, Juyun as well, and Sangha. It's very powerful. Very, very powerful character, very powerful individual. A lot of attention when you're watching the full. Um, Landy, what did you think about this Y2K type of uh, music video? Um, did you find yourself in high school people like this? I, uh, I agree with you. One of my only notes on this song is that it is definitely my favorite light song song by far. Uh, high teen concept for me is just kind of whatever. I think it's fun. <laughs> But I don't, you know, I don't really care for it. Maybe since I'm no longer in high school, I don't really care. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, as far as the song itself, the chorus is really sicky. I really, really like it. It's it's, it's good, catchy. Uh, other words, which mean the same thing. <laughs> uh, Nina, the post chorus is whatever, but I I really like the chorus a lot. So yeah. Yeah, the chorus is is very catchy, very sticky, like you said. Um, I'm humming it in my head right now. I will not sing it for the audience. No, I'm I'm good. I wish I could sing. Uh, Nina, uh, when you were in high school, did you dance around in gymnasiums, or were you part of the AV club, or were you the teacher's pet, um, and kind of the, <laughs> the one early to class studying in study hall? Which member of Lightsome were you? <laughs> Definitely none. <laughs> I was an anime and K-pop nerd, so <laughs> we're uh, yeah, we're really carrying on the bubblegum pop theme here. Um, we were talking a little bit before the show about how light this month was in girl groups because they're all either waiting for summer or on Queendom, <laughs> so we didn't get a whole lot of girl groups. But yeah, this is definitely a really fun song. Um, you know, Lightsome debuted with like a very very cutesy song, and then they did eyes one for their comeback it's basically just an eyes one song <laughs> and now they're uh this this i th would say suits them the best out of everything that they tried um like the high teen teen crush whatever i mean it's kind of a little bit maybe a little bit overdone at the moment because stacy is the blueprint uh for rookie girl groups but yeah no it's, it's a really cute fun song i have to say my one complaint about it is um Back when I um, I tried to introduce my sister to K-pop, and she 
the reason that she didn't want to listen to Twice was because their voices are very... It's like a forced ego sound to the voice. I find Lightsome does it a bit in the verse. It's like they're trying to make their voices more high-pitched and sound younger. And mm. sometimes, like, ever since my sister pointed that out to me, it, it, it sometimes it grates on me a little bit. But they only really do it in the verses. Um, and I mean, it's just kind of a K-pop thing that you have to get used to because a lot of girl groups yeah. do it whenever they do something cute or bright. <laughs> I was so shocked uh, on show one's part that it was her part because it did not sound like her. Yeah, yeah. It's like they're putting on a voice a little bit. Um, but yeah, luckily they, uh, the chorus doesn't have too much of that. So I, I, it's still, you know, fun, bright. The music video is very fun and I think it suits them really well, but yeah, that would, that would be my one complaint. <laughs> Can't hear it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, was, I was like, should I say this? Am I going to ruin this song? <laughs> it, it, no, you're, you're totally fine. But just like, it's playing in my head now. It's like, oh yeah, the choruses <laughs> are a little bit more cheesy than the rest of the song. Um, and it's kind of strange because, well, not strange, but the, 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 the song has a trap back back into it, so it's got a little mm. bit of an edge. Um, but again, like they sing it so high, it's just like it, it, yeah, it, it's it's very sugary. Um, I think what you said was interesting about the first two songs that Lightsome came out with, where you didn't feel like they had a character, right? Where they were going between two different concepts, very different concepts. Um, and now here, it it makes sense that they're doing a high teen concept because they are teenagers. I think I kind of feel the same way in the uh, high teen fatigue because <laughs> older people are doing high teen. <laughs> we should not be doing high teen. Even though I did say I like I, I did yeah. like the Moonbeal song last year. Yeah, time. I was just going to say shout out Moonbeal. <laughs> um, she is almost 30. Um, <laughs> the song itself is pretty fun. And then I thought about it. I was like, yeah, she she's a little old for this music video. <laughs> Um, I think if, if if teenagers were the ones primarily doing high teen, it would be it would make more sense. But I think we're getting it everywhere. The other uh, <laughs> side of that situation. Otherwise, yeah, it, it's good that they found kind of their their foothold, and hopefully they can do music similar to this because the uh, the entire mini album has a very consistent theme of being the cool cool girls at school. A lot of cool girl, cool school girl things, right? Um, and very fitting. All right. Um, going back to the top, Nina. Mm, what is yes. Your number two song. Um. So it's a song that initially I didn't think was going to be on my list, but uh, it came out early in the month, and it's really grown on me. And it's uh, "Fearless" by La Seraphim. That came out this month, right? I'm not totally losing yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Do a quick double check. That feels like it was so long ago. Um, yeah, I, when this, uh, first came out, I wasn't really into it. Um, I, you know, obviously we hyped up a lot. We, uh, we love the Eyes One Girls and I was a big Yunjin fan during, uh, Produce. And yeah, when I first heard it, I, I was kind of let down. Maybe I was uh, hoping for something more high energy. Um, but I've been listening to it a lot throughout the month. Um, it really grew on me. I think it's really groovy. Um, yeah, there's been a lot going on with this group, but <laughs> I, I like the, the there's like a, I like the attitude. There's a sass to this song, and I think they all pull it off really well. And uh, yeah, I I think my um, my roommate ended up really liking it. And the more she listened to it, the more I listened to it. And uh, yeah, I'm this might have come out in April. I'm <laughs> did we talk about this song last time? No, we didn't. <laughs> we didn't. It, okay, it came out like. The last it came on the year. second of May. Yeah. Okay, okay, good, yeah. good, good. <laughs> I have no concept of time anymore. Time <laughs> yeah, let's hear him. Fearless, I like it. Um, I'm going to stop myself from telling a joke and just let you go, Zondi. What did you think about Let's <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I the song did grow on me quite a bit as well, but uh, not enough for me to put on the list. I like parts of the song, but it is still a little like. Like I'm watching an, an Adidas ad still. And mm. I can't really get over that personally. <laughs> but I mean, I'm still, you know, looking forward to what the group has to put out. Obviously, there's some bias there. Uh, but I, I have a couple gripes with respect to the concepting. I think the mm -hmm. gym stuff is kind of boring, played out, whatever. Uh, and also, like, you have, like, 15-year-olds here doing that, and it just makes me a little icky, but uh, the song itself is it is what it is. It's fine. Uh, it's catchy. It's a bit groovy. I like it, but 
yeah, yeah I, I have um, a couple reservations I don't watch the live stages because uh, yeah I do think the styling and the choreography is not suitable for a 15 year old <laughs> yeah <laughs> This is this is why I stopped myself from telling a joke. Um, <laughs> good, good stuff about the song. I I like the groove. Um, it definitely just slides right into uh, a playlist where <clears throat> it's a little darker. Um, but there's still a lot of fun to this song. I would say. Um, it, it's very easy to listen to. Um, it's one of those songs where you just throw on. And you're like, yeah, this is this is this is good. This is a 2022 K-pop song. Um, I think Che One is good at K-pop. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> really good at K-pop. Like wow. <laughs> Um, she's definitely the standout for me, just yeah. like in yeah. stages, and like, I just watched Taiwan fan cams. <laughs> <laughs> that, that for some reason that was just so funny to me. Um, <laughs> I I only get Taiwan fan cams for my for you page on TikTok, so thank you TikTok <laughs> algorithm. Um, she she's really good. Um, I I think it. I don't if if it's her a lot like her character as as what as a K-pop idol, um, kind of separating from Eyes One. Um, I think it's a good start for her and the group. Uh, the reservations I have for it are very similar in the sense that I think the music video, they should have just picked one concept instead of doing a couple concepts that were all like commercials. Because they they did the, the gym training, right? Yeah. It's cool. And then they're like in, in the city. And it's like, okay, uh, 15 year olds, that's cool. There, there's one shot that I did really like. It's the stage where everything is like, exploding behind them like the uh mm -hmm. just, yeah i feel like they could have expanded on that because they there was an element of like high fashion in their their costuming there oh i really wish like that was the thing that they were leaning into maybe it was too similar to Ive, but i mean if it's the song and if it's kind of the them being like the, the more um like i'm strong like i'm fearless like concept right which you know it's it's not a new concept but i think for the song for them and the way that they performed it it could have been nice focus as just the, an introduction to them as a but uh, they kind of did one too many things that didn't feel like music video mm -hmm. um, but the song itself very groovy very cool um, choreography they're good at dancing let's just leave it there <laughs> and um, yeah uh, there there is a age gap between the oldest member and the youngest member 10 years right uh, I think it's eight, but yeah. 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 But it's sizable. Yeah. yeah. I, I um was talking with my roommate who really likes the song, and I said, you know, if it if it weren't for... Like, I feel like the thing that's holding me back from becoming a La Seraphim fan is that age gap. Um, in general, I'm against people under 16 debuting. I don't think... I, I think actually 18, but I know that's never going to happen. Um, and yeah, it's just a little... Like, I just wish that they had... Because the four older girls are very talented. Um, and yeah, it's just like a little uncomfortable, especially for me, you know, an adult pushing 30, um, <laughs> to, yeah, I, I just, I really wish that they hadn't put teenagers in this group. <laughs> yeah. If this was the concept they were going to go for, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, and I think the other thing too, is this was probably the most hyped debut in a while. Um, and the, the song is like pretty chill and laid back and like you said the music video just kind of feels like a commercial so i think a lot of people it just it just maybe didn't live up to the hype yeah um hopefully they have some room to grow and whatever they're going through right now that they yeah. you know, get through <laughs> um i i will just look at this from the perspective of the members that are still promoting are real people everyone let's just remember mm. um Zandi, anything else about this song that you want to talk about? Any uh, dance moves you want to talk about that you're really good at? Uh, yeah, actually, the, the the one right at the start of the chorus, I think it's really funny, and I, I don't like <laughs> it, but I think it's really funny. Oh, okay. Like, when, well, they're, when they're, like, legs shoulder width, and they're, like, swinging left and right with the hand, like, wiping the face, I think it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, Zondi, what is your number two song of the month of May? My number two song of the month of May is is, is Ari Ari Ya by Yaren. Nice. That was my first alternate. <laughs> yeah, I, I really liked it. When I, when I came out, I was like, this is, uh, this is a good song. And it's a really solid debut from Yaren. 
uh, I think it's a really good take on, you know, the K-pop girl group for future base. The you know, IS One and and Uju Sonya have given us recently, or maybe not so recently, but uh, <laughs> I, I I really like the song. I think the arrangement and I think the songwriting as well complement Yaren's voice really really well. That's also a lot of why I think future bass works well for for K-pop girl groups. Uh, but the way they fill up the kind of low and mid ends with the synths uh, really complement Yaren's like slightly thinner voice. Uh, I really like the pre-chorus where they use the silence as well to to kind of accentuate the big synth hits. I think it's so good. Uh, yeah, I really like the song. It's nice. my number two. Um, Nina. Did this song take you back to the mid 2010s when you were going to every single rave and being the coolest girl there? I was actually working in Forever 21 in the mid 2010s, so kind of the same thing. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. I think this is like the perfect choice for her. Um, everything about it is really suited to her from the images of the music video to the way the song's written. Um, I wasn't, I didn't like um mm -hmm. it's not that i didn't like i wasn't that into yuju's debut play um mm -hmm. and i i don't know i felt like it was kind of a maybe a weird choice for her or something I, I never listened to it that much but this one it just seems like they hit it out of the park like they they hit the nail on the head <laughs> um this is exactly what yaren should be doing and it's like future base cute version kind of like we got we had glitch last month that we were also into this is like the brighter cuter version of glitch <laughs> glitch's younger sister <laughs> yeah no i i think i think she did great she looks super cute and her voice is perfectly suited to the song yeah great yeah, work i think the, the whole the whole package of you know them choosing for it to be a very the, the future based nature of the song keeps it at a certain tempo it's very like it just keeps going it's a very like pick me up kind of song um, but then her just like being very cute with the way she sings the song and then the uh, the styling choices, the dresses and kind of like the fantasy settings uh, all kind of work really well uh, to the point where it's like uh, my head just like will just turn on the song and I will just like have it stuck in my head for the rest of the day. Even having not listened to the song at any point, I can just say adi adi ya, adi adi ya, and here we are. Um <laughs> The one, the one thing that I wish was a little different was uh two minutes thirty seconds. I, I kind of need a little more. I, I just want more her because she's co so cool. Yeah. Um, very short. I, we've got a G friend Renaissance. I, I <laughs> freaking love it. Like God, like it, it's weird to say like 2019 was so long ago as far as like G friends like peak. Right. Well, well, you guys are are long time buddies, longer than I am. So would. When when would you say they peaked, and how how are you feeling about all the G Friend members now, kind of doing their own thing in different ways and kind of being back in K-pop in a lot of ways? Uh, I'll throw it to Nina first. It's kind of um, I feel like they peaked internationally with like Apple and Maga right at the end of their run, but those songs weren't um, weren't all that successful in Korea actually. Um, but I definitely feel like that was the time when international fans were like really hyping G Friend up. So that's why the disbandment especially felt so. Like they were getting cut off just when they were, they were, you know, they had just kind of changed their concepts and uh, grown up into women. And it really felt like we were just like entering a new era of G Friend and then it all got cut short. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's hard to say. They they just had such a solid run all the way through <laughs> for me musically. Um, I, I like j almost every G Friend title track, uh, Fingertips being the outlier. I don't like that song. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, it just, it feels really good to see them all doing what they want to do. Um, can't wait for the BBBZ's comeback as well. I thought they did really well in Queendom. And yeah, I was very excited to see Yaren debut. So I'm glad that it was with such a good song. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Zondi, what did you think about Yaren's uh, personality and character um, being shown here? So they did talk about a bit on the main show about she's the quirky, funny one, right? Mm -hmm. Um they didn't see it so much in the music video and the song, but I think the color of the song, like the actual color, not like the K-pop use of color, but like this is very bright. It's I I it, I say this lovingly, kind of like almost a, a, 
an obnoxious sprite where it's just like, yeah, you're in a fantasy world and she's the main focus point. It's like, yes, because she's the soloist. Perfect. Um, how, how do you feel like her character was portrayed for this song? Yeah, I can see that. Uh, I, I, before you kind of expanded on it, I would have agreed with the sentiment of the, the main show, which was to say that this is not exactly necessarily what I'd expect out of, like in terms of if, if I were to have a music video represent Yaren as, as, a, as a concept, as an idea in K-pop, uh, I wouldn't necessarily have chosen what came out in this music video, but uh, yeah, the bright colors do really well in kind of translating that. I feel like maybe still I'm I'm a little doubtful on, on that interpretation of things, but uh, yeah, I, 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 I do see it, but in a way I'm I'm more compelled with just you know she's she's a she's going to be a year in the the variety star for the for the near future right and her and K-pop is maybe a separate entity That's a really nice way to differentiate it I think that's you articulated that well I didn't think of it that way right where um, she does kind of have to rebuild a lot of her uh, her identity as a, as a musician, um, even though she's very capable. Um, I think right now we all the large part of her her career has just been the character that she plays on variety shows. So we'll, we'll see how that looks just being on her own. Um, but I think the song is just very fun and catchy. Yeah, give me some EDM, some future bass, some mid twenty tens, and um. Yeah, let's all go to a rave in London with uh, Zondi. Okay, Nina? All right, cool. I'll see you there. All right. Um, is that me? My number two song? Mm-hmm. All right. My number two song. I, I'm i wavering between the two. So I'm going to go with this one instead. I'm just going to flip it. Um, it's Icon with But You. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is on my retro playlist. It just it, It's very bright and fun. Um, Icon, I think they're most recent stuff has just been very like introspective and kind of brooding and moody. I'm so glad that we're just like, Hey, we're going to have some fun. We're going to go into the streets. We're going to go into, um, foggy nightclubs and dance the night away. That's a twice song. Um, it's great. Twice song. Great. Twice mm-hmm. song. I don't know. I'm also the, the person I, I feel like I've brought this up like a million times, but we're today. 2010s was a time of a, of a very specific type of nightclub, and um, the this song and music video definitely captured that. Um, the the lyrics are just really fun, as far as like you know, looking for someone, searching for someone, right, and kind of being out in the night and kind of enjoying yourself and kind of being a young person. Um, Bobby's part was pretty cool. Um, a really good example of just enough rap to be good and then just like not overwhelm the song. Um, and overall, a really fun package. Um, you know, what did you think about bright retro icons about you? Yeah, I'm, um, I'm normally not a huge icon fan. I, I you know, I kind of go back and forth. There's a couple icon songs that I really like, but, um, I wasn't really expecting anything from this and I was shocked by how much I liked it. Um, my, my friend and I, we always joke that our favorite genre of K-pop songs is songs that make you think of Take On Me by AHA <laughs> when you hear those synths. Um, I, I love 80s retro synths. That's one of my favorite tropes in K-pop. Um, yeah, when I, I remember I first listened to this and I was like, wow, I'm really enjoying an Icon song. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I love 80s throwbacks. I never get tired of them. Um, and, you know, it's nice that um, Bobby's still promoting with them. They didn't pull an EXO when he had a game. <laughs> That's like the most surprising <laughs> Yeah, that, <laughs> I guess YG. You know they're kind of different, but yeah. <laughs> I've, I've, apparently, YG is just a different company now. Kind of, maybe <laughs> I don't know. We still don't get anything from Blackpink. Hi, um, but I, I feel like Icon. Like I agree in the sense that I don't listen to very much Icon. I, I give them a chance every time. Sometimes it's really it's, it works for me. Um, sometimes it's just really mellow and introspective, like Why Why Why. This one is just like a complete flip. It's like, hey, we're going to do something really pop, fun, and a lot of dancing. So much dancing for this group that I never would have. Um, Sandy, what did you yeah. think about, you know, 80s synth and uh, AHA's take on me? Um, were you taken by this song? <laughs> God, I suck today. 
Anyways. You, you know what's really funny is my note is uh, one of my favorite parts of K-pop is when you feel like the producer is the kind of person who'd go up to you and go, you ever heard of The Weeknd? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is basically the same thing as what yeah. you said. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I enjoyed the song. I thought it was really fun uh, to kind of echo what you guys said. I'm not the most big icon fan in the world. I think they've got a couple good songs in the bag I did enjoy. A couple of, of the stuff they've put out. Uh, also shocked that Bobby's still promoting. <laughs> uh, I, I thought the song was a little cheesy. It did lean an, into it in a little cheesy way and not in a way that necessarily felt too tongue-in-cheek. Uh, m- maybe it's just me who who heard the the drum fills and the the bridge <laughs> the in the air tonight drum fills? <laughs> and I was like, well, this is going a bit far. <laughs> but um, uh, I, I I did enjoy it. I thought it was fun. Uh, I, I love Neutro. I think it's hard for a group to go wrong doing it, but it's also hard for them to stand out doing it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I did like the song. I thought it was really fun. That's that's a really nice mid midpoint where it's like it's hard for a group to do it bad, but then are you super memorable? Um, I can. Well, looking at my playlist that I made, I, there's only one that's like, "This is song of the year." Uh, promise, <laughs> promise nine DM by the way. Um, mm-hmm. That fits that neutral like amazing song, but everything else kind of just flows in this nebulous space of. 70s 80s 90s where it's like it's all kind of like, this 30 year period it's all kind of like one sound now in a lot of ways um but i don't know this song just works for this year for me and it's fun and light um in a weird way it kind of started summer maybe may 10 around may 10 was when the song came out um yeah i don't know it's just really that's fun and light I feel like we're just like in you know, a very light, happy mood today. You know, we're just all light music. It's like nothing too heavy, nothing too brooding and deep. Um, there, there is one song that I did not put on the list that's very brooding, very interesting. But eh, maybe we can talk about it later. Um, we probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it didn't have the uh, the characteristic letters and numbers combination and symbol. Make my list. Um, th- th- let's get back to Nina. Nina, what is your number one song of May 2020? Hmm, I wonder. Two. There's this no, a certain a certain boy group under the Hive umbrella hmm. released a, a a song this month. I I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, Good Boy Gone Bad by TXT. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I love the graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> um. Speaking of, for your retro playlist, one of their B-sides, Tuesday's Child Has Far oh, To Go. I think it's yeah. Thursday, but yeah. It's right. Thursday? Yes, you're right. It's Thursday. Um, yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's Take On Me by AHA. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, It's Hot by Seventeen. <laughs> you're hot. <laughs> by Seventeen. <laughs> so I feel like, um, I don't know, Zondi might expose me here, but when this first came out, I didn't like it. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> i um so, i was disappointed i'm so um, right now yeah yeah the the first time i heard it i i remember i woke up and i listened to it and i was like no <laughs> you know i'm in general i'm um a fresh teen enthusiast i like their upbeat cute stuff but obviously they can't do that all the time um and of course i kept listening to it because i'm a major 17 fan and i'm trying to stockholm syndrome myself into liking it and it worked um, it worked. I, I really like it now. Um, yeah, the live stages helped a lot. I think the live performances mm-hmm. without the vocal processing really take it to the next level. Um, I've always been a complainer about the way that Hybe produces their vocals. Um, and I feel like they're starting to do that to 17 a little bit. Um, it's just sort of like, a, it's almost like they... They take them all and make them. It's like maybe too much pitch correction. It makes them sound a little roboty, especially with in hypen. I find, um, but you do hear it in TXT and BTS as well. Um, and it doesn't ruin a song for me, but I, I'm just I'm not a huge fan of it. 
um, some of the auto tune in this song is obviously stylistic. It's intentional, um, especially like Woozy's verse when he first mm. comes in. Um, but I just I think the the live vocals really uh, it, it just sounds so much better, <laughs> and that's what made me realize that I actually like it quite a bit. Um, my first thought when I first listened to it was, oh, it, this is a boy group noise song, you know, the classic noise music. But then when I listen to it more, I think the only thing that really gives you that feeling is the siren in the background. There's a constant siren throughout the song. Um, but when you take that away and you really listen to the guitars and the melody, um, I, it, you know, <laughs> I, I think it's good. Um, I think the chorus is really fun. I think the performance is they've all done really well um this is their not only their best-selling album but it's actually their best charting song in korea in a really long time which shocked me i i didn't think this was gonna go over with like the korean general public but they've been like dancing around the melon top 10 which is insane um <laughs> especially for a song like this um i'm just i've been really basking in this promotion period as a carrot like i'm thriving um the content has been so good uh they did a dingo killing voice that i i recommend for everyone even if you're not a 17 fan um it's like a 30 minute medley of a bunch of their title tracks and b-sides and it's really really good um and then that was number one trending on i'm just gonna brag about 17 success now don't mind me uh, <laughs> number one on South Korea. We've been going pretty quick, so you can. <laughs> I warned you guys it was going to happen. We blocked off 45 minutes for you to talk. <laughs> so you were good. Keep going. Uh, yeah, the um, number one trending on South Korea for like three days was their Dingo Killing Voice. And then number two was their um, crossover with MMTG, the YouTube channel. Um, they've, yeah, it, I, I just can't believe, you know, I've been a fan of 17 since debut. Um, and starting out, a lot of people didn't think that 17 were going to make it. <laughs> yeah, it was a 13 member boy group from Pletus who was failing heavily at the time. Um, you know, they had newest who wasn't successful. <laughs> they had, they lost Hello Venus after school was basically dead. Um, and everyone's like, oh yeah. And then there's this 13 member boy group that they've been trying to debut for two years. Um, yeah, people, uh, didn't think they were going to make it. And now they're the second biggest boy group in the world. And it's just, I feel like a proud mother <laughs> just watching them go. Um, I'm not talking about the song at all, but <laughs> the, the performances highly recommended. Um, they're, they're given their all. Um, they're really killing the stage. All of them, you know, 17 doesn't have a, a black hole when it comes to dancing. They're all really good dancers, which is amazing. Um, their encore that they did at M Countdown this week with the live vocals was amazing. <laughs> Everyone's been praising them a lot. And when you praise 17, you're basically praising me. So thank you. <laughs> well, I'm no stranger to praising you. So no problem there. Um, I'm gonna, and, um, oh, yeah, sorry. No, please. Someone else talk. <laughs> someone interrupt me. <laughs> I, I, I've got an interesting experience with this song. So I, mm -hmm. I went into my prep for this song. Um, I clicked the first video that came up on the search, it was the special video with the Yeehaw. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why is this just one shot? Oh, this is not the music video. But I freaking loved it. One, because Yeehaw. Man, the Kimchi Western is just like, they, they're so strong with it. Like, it works for them. It works for this song. But then I got to see the entire choreography play out. And I was like, holy crap. Like, they one, they're good. Two, it works really well with the song. And three, like, the guitar. It's like, please, give me all the guitar. It's like, I I don't know, man. It's like, if, if I had just listened to the song, I would know exactly what direction they're going into. I'm so glad I watched the special stage because it kind of set me up for, like, the, the more artistic expression of it. Um, and then going into the actual music video, it's like, I can see those elements. And I really wish that they just did Kimchi Western for the entire music video. But... Mm -hmm. I, I, Same. I, I understand that you know they they had a lot of ideas there's a lot of members and let's let's just like all throw it into one music video it's like okay you have a big budget now you know you're part of uh you know the uh the other company with uh the other boy group that makes a lot of money let's just you know let's just do some stuff um 
Well, I have a lot more, but I'm going to go to Zandi. Zandi, what did you feel about this kimchi western, and do you want to yeehaw with 17? <laughs> One of my points uh, about the song was yeehaw. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I, I similarly to the other song that Mina talked about, the song did not really grow on me. Uh, the live stages helped. I, I really do like the live stages. Um, but, yeah, I couldn't really get over the vocal processing at least in the 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 recorded version but the choreo is really really good uh, really interesting the post chorus the first part of the post chorus uh hoshi's part mm-hmm. at least in the first chorus is really really like you know, really engaging uh big action uh, in the special video a lot of camera movements help pin that down i, I really like that uh, I'm watching their music bank performance from yesterday, and Jung Han has this kind of like necklace with two bum bags on either side under his armpits, <laughs> and I think it's really funny. <laughs> so I want to talk about that for a second. Uh, who who thought of that, and where can I buy one? <laughs> <laughs> I highly recommend everybody to have a look because it's so funny. Nina's the representative. I'm sure she can direct you in um, <laughs> the correct styling. <laughs> options to purchase uh, speaking of styling options can i ask you about something nina what is mm-hmm. going on with this uh this the eight shirt <laughs> um, it, 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 for a second it looked like a real shirt and then it it, it was transparent <laughs> what what explain some more he has red yeah. hair for those who don't know the eight he has red hair in this music video yeah this is definitely he's uh he's crushing his era uh good for him his development um like when he first joined 17 he couldn't speak korean and he was like super shy um so he's had massive character development um yeah 17 are just in their thought era currently um (laughs) they've all hit the gym and (laughs) yeah i hey man it's i don't know i everything about this was i'm i'm watching the music bank stage now and i just saw jung hands (laughs) bags <laughs> it's so funny it's very funny <laughs> some of the styling you know I, I i'm not the target audience for this styling for sure but um they they feel very cool and that's what's important as long as 17 are having fun i'm having fun <laughs> i definitely get um you know it's it's a, it's a song that you either like or you don't um and if you don't like this style of song then but yeah, I, I again, I really recommend the live stages. I think they're an experience, and um, the album it the album's only thirty minutes long, which is mm, <laughs> barely a full album, but a very good listen. There's some really good songs on there. Um, yeah, just proud of Seventeen. I'd have to say, <laughs> if if you come into this song and this release as an experience, it's really enjoyable. Um, mm-hmm. Because because uh, I. I I've said this before, but I watch music video first before I listen to anything just because I want to see like how it's put together. I think if I just listened to the song by itself, I may not have liked it as much. But and then specifically, I watch the special the special video, special stage where they're all cowboyed <laughs> out. Uh, I I immediately knew the tone they were going for. So it's like, this is so much fun. I'm just <laughs> having the time of my life. And I'm sure Nina is as well. Um, can, can I ask you about uh, your one and only? <laughs> my boy so he has the hot 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 part mm. man that that voice is just like deep um, yeah uh, tell me everything you want to tell me about him you can start <laughs> with the mullet and if you want to go into his soul feel free what is happening with boy as he did the pink wig and the cowboy hat for me specifically that was uh <laughs> targeted at me yeah he um one thing about Seventeen is that even, you know, there's 13 members, even if someone doesn't get a lot of lines, there's always a moment when they're highlighted. Like, I, I never come away from a music video being like, oh, where was this person? Where was this person? Everyone kind of gets their moment in the spotlight, and I really like that. Um, I'm very sad that he cut his hair, because he had the black mullet with the blonde underneath. I was obsessed with that. That was probably my favorite hair from him ever. Um, and then he cut it, and now he just has short hair. So I don't, I don't know if he's mad at me or something. Um. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I'm gonna have to rebel. <laughs> yeah, he. Um, Seventeen is a group of 
dudes with fairly high voices overall actually there's really only escoops and wanu that come in with the with the deep voices so they always stand out when they do and uh i'm glad that you think he's cool thank you (laughs) he's very cool you are very cool as well um this little guy is really cool too what did you think about um our our little guy here zondi woozy um yeah yeah. (laughs) he stands out so much in like all of the songs um speaking people who are good at k-pop you know very good at K-pop, um, Zandi. I don't. I don't. I don't know if you have the same history with Seventeen, but can you can you kind of like go into like why he's such a standout and has he always been this way? I mean, Seventeen's a fairly tall group, and he's a little guy, <laughs> <laughs> and he sings good, and he he writes good music, especially when he's writing for other groups. <laughs> cough, cough. <laughs> 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 Yeah, he has a couple of really stand-up moments. Obviously, the first verse, which is uh, kind of, I mean, the, the auto-tune is heavy on that part, and it's clearly stylistic, but uh, it's one of those occasions where I don't think it really works for me. But uh, he really does stand out in that part, though. Like, you know it's Woozy singing, maybe because it's just a little guy in the middle is belting, <laughs> but it's, you know, it's a really good time. Uh, he has another part later on, I think, the second verse, which I also really enjoy. Where, yeah, I think, like, you know, for a little man, he's got a lot of power in, in mm-hmm. his voice. And when he, you know, kind of leads the choreography in the sections, I think he's uh, very, very talented in the, the K pop ways. Yeah. I feel like every time I watch a 17 release, he's like the first thing that comes to mind when I want to, like, be compressed about anything it's like where's nina and where's woozy those are the two things that come to mind um musically my favorite well the part that like i I remember because i think it was just a very nice palate cleansing like okay let's slow it down let's be less a little less crazy was uh dk joshua and dino in the pre-chorus was it a part where essentially they slowed down was like kind of a palate cleanser where it's like them vocal their, their vocals were kind of the highlight um of that section um, because man, this this is a lot of energy happening. Um, <laughs> between the song and the music video, the original music video with all the different cuts and all the different scenes, <laughs> I really couldn't put together what story they were, they were going for. Um, I, I know uh, there's a, there's a coin. I don't know if there's ever a story with seventeen. <laughs> yeah, but coin. There's a coin. What, yeah. what is this coin? Yeah, I see this coin. Uh, it's the sun. <laughs> yeah you can tell by the way it blends into the sun yeah yeah yeah. i i think with 17 like fans especially they always love to look for lore and that kind of thing and every time with 17 they're always trying to dig into the, the teasers leading up to this were kind of mysterious and but there's there's never a deeper story it's just they're just some good looking guys dancing and that's all yeah in a <laughs> lot of different settings at, yeah at first it's like it seems like it makes sense that there's a, there's the mad max feel that they mentioned on the show there's like the construction site it's like okay it kind of blends in there's some sand and then they go into like these buildings and it's like now we're in a grunge music video it's like what and then there's a carnival and someone's on a spinning wheel with some knives it's like oh my god it's just sensory overload but I love it. Yeah, it's it is overwhelming for sure. Yee freaking <laughs> ha, Dandy. Any final no. yeehaws for us about seventeen? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think Nina covered it quite nice. She killed it. Way to go. Yeehaw, Zandi, What is your last song? Uh, number one song. Sorry, number one song of May two thousand twenty-two. My number one song of May two thousand twenty-two, because <laughs> I simply cannot help myself, and for. Three months in a row, I need to cheat. It's going to be a Red Sun by VVs. <laughs> you are amazing. I love it. Why is Unha the best? Tell me. <laughs> this song, I'll get to that in a second, but this song has like quickly become one of my favorite songs of the year. Like The first time I listened to it, I cried. And then the second time and the third time I listened to it, I cried. Uh <laughs> I think it's it's like it's so good. It's so it's the perfect blend of like classic D friend, you know, with J pop elements blended into other genres of music. And this time they do Broadway musical. And it's it kinda sounds like modern times era IU, which is maybe I mean I know it's Nina's favorite, but it's also maybe my favorite IU era. And I also can't help myself and have to bring up IU. Uh, <laughs> 
uh, the, the performance is so good. They have two high notes and neither of them are in her, so they get to show off the other members' vocal chops, and it's really well done. Uh, all three of them in the live stage stand out. Obviously, there's only three of them, and they get a four-minute stage, so they obviously all stand out in their own ways. I think Amiji is a really big highlight in this one. Uh, the way I think the story is whatever is being portrayed on the on the stage is kind of revolving around her, but uh, the song is is just wonderful. I think it's so good. It's a top three song of the year for me. Uh, Inha is very cute. To answer your question, thank you. Uh, yes, th- those are my initial notes. I think it's so good. I think it's wonderful. It's magical. Honestly, uh, I I was crying during the when I was watching Queendom. I will just say it because I mean you get the 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 prep work for it right where they lead into like the history of the song. It was a former G friend song. Um, the company had a completely different idea of what they wanted to do, and they but they said, "Can, can we do this?" They're like, "Yes." Uh, I was like, "Wow, wow, what is happening?" Um. Uh, going to the stage, um, yes, MG is definitely the focal point, um, but they all definitely get their, um, their stand-up moments. To me, it, it's Sinbi. She, to me, she's always kind of the edgy, cool girl. Um, would rather you know do hip hop, rather rather dance hip hop, but is here with her friends, and, and she pulls <laughs> it off so well. Just like she flows into that dress, and just like plays into the story of uh, very Alice in Wonderland falling into a different uh, fantastical dimension. Um, all the different like sets, colors, and then she sings um, with just a smile that is from from the show very different from where she, where, what she is usually, especially her uh, relationship with Insu. But it, it's very <laughs> believable and it's just like very sweet. And you know, I'm having my parasocial moment where it's like, "Hi, Sinvi, can we marry? Thank you, I love you." Um, Nina. Did you have a parasocial moment watching the stage? <laughs> Yo, actually, yeah, because I am so proud of Omji. Um, it's another one of those things, like I was talking about the eight earlier, um, just how much she's grown over her time with G Friend um, into such a beautiful young woman. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love this song. It's like Zonji said, it's kind of Red Shoes by IU crossed with a classic G Friend nostalgia. Um, and it's, it's great, man. It's so good. I, uh, my friends and I have been watching Queendom together and we lose our minds every time Una's on screen. <laughs> it's insane how cute that girl. It's like, she's, it's almost psychotic. Um. <laughs> that is the perfect way to put it. Oh my God. <laughs> I lose my yeah. mind all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I've been really proud of VVZ uh, throughout Queendom. I think they've done some great stages and this song is great. It's, it's very, very good. <laughs> um, yeah, I actually, I don't know how I hadn't made the Red Shoes connection, but now that Zondi said that, that makes sense why I like it so much, because I love the Red Shoes by IU. Mm-hmm. Zondi's yeah. a true IU. So. Yeah. I, and uh, when they when I saw their outfits in the finale, I said, okay, Disney princesses, let's go. So good. It's just so exciting. Yeah. Because um, they released the song a week ahead of time. I mm. just listened to it all week. And I was like, I, I, I can see it happening now. And then once the show kind of explored... Yeah, the process. So, um, yeah, I don't know what else there is to say because I love this song. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> so good. Um, BBZ, come back. I think that's the final message we have. Um, yeah, I mean, all the groups from Queendom are coming back in the next yeah. few months, so yeah. it's time. It's, <laughs> it's, it's the post Queen Damara. Yeah. I'm really curious if they continue with a G Friend sound or something very I close hope to it, right? They don't. Because yeah, I, I, I want them to you, come into their own. Mm, mm-hmm. But I mean, that being said, like I said, this is a top three song of the year for me. So maybe it's not such a bad give thing us, if they do. Give us some uh, B sides with the G friend sound, maybe. Exactly. I mean, Mirror is was uh, yeah, it's really good. So that is a good. Yeah, I'm happy for. Point. I'm happy either way. Yeah, I'll take it. Give me, give me more G friend, but not you know, but also give me VZ. 
I, I we'll talk about this at the queendom part, but um, I, I'm so happy that. Mm-hmm. All right, I guess that's me now. My last, my number one song for May 2022 is Got7. Nah, nah, nah. Um, <laughs> they're back. You know, it's nice that they, um, you know, were able to get the rights for not just not just their the name of the group, but all of their songs apparently. So, um, shout out to the crew for going into great detail about that. Thanks, Doug. Um. Yeah, they got all the rights to all their past songs so they can perform them on stages. It was JYP as a company, so whatever businessman was running it um, was cool enough to be like, yo, you know, good relationship, sure. Um, but let's also remember that God7 probably had to pay for those rights at that point. So um, that probably shows you just how successful God7 actually are individually, that they're able to pull their money to get those rights because I, d- I don't think they were free, just put it that way. Um, what did you guys think of, well, Nina, what did you think about this song? Um, we're just in a, a an era of brightness, right? So we've got like a very like <laughs> bright R&B song. Um, to me, it's very like evocative of like Kai last year. Um, JB is like the head dude on this song. So he, he definitely, the, the deaf stuff is all there. And then Bam Bam just had come back with the same similar like brightness to it. Um, yeah. how, how do you feel about like GOT7? kind of an og group not just doing their thing and i was like we're, we're r&b dancers now you know a f- fun fact about god seven is i was there for their first win on the show in october 2015 <laughs> i what? witnessed it yeah what don't yeah. you do you're just everywhere <laughs> i mean we've established that you were in korea for like 10 years and you were a part of the scene um you were fluent yeah, in I saw their first win. oh my god all right <laughs> yeah. anyway um god seven they they actually they've been hit or miss for me um I, I like a couple of their songs for a while. They uh, they weren't doing anything I was really into, but this is probably my favorite God Seven song in a while. Um, and yeah, it's kind of nice because you know that they're doing what they want to do. Basically, um, I'm sure they probably have full creative control at this point. And also, you know, how many times do we see a group leave their company or whatever, and they say we're not disbanding? You know, this is just a hey, it is. We're not disbanding, and then we never hear from them again. <laughs> very common they love to lead the fans along and pretend that they have so yeah so it's really nice to see a group say that and follow through <laughs> they didn't lie to us um yeah no i i really enjoyed the song very chill very laid back and um yeah good for them good for hot seven <laughs> yeah really really colorful again I, I we're just in a colorful is may that's like so May is spring, <laughs> clearly. So did every May flowers. May flowers, <laughs> right? Did every group, whether you are a, a boy group or girl group, decide that we're all just going to be spring May flowers just blossoming into existence? Uh Zondi, have you blossomed into existence and will you be buying a scarf similar to Bam Bam's? Uh probably not. <laughs> it's pretty expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I uh I, I like the song quite a bit. I don't have many notes on it. I feel like it's pretty straightforward. I wrote vibes forward chillcore, <laughs> which uh, which may mean nothing to you, but to me it describes the song perfectly. It describes uh, you perfectly in your description <laughs> and your thought process. So I get it, hundred percent. It, it's yeah, I, I I really like. I'm I'm happy that they're back. It's really nice to see them actually come out with something. Uh, the song itself is very enjoyable. It's definitely by far my favorite God Seven song, which is three things repeated or one thing repeated three times. The other one is not as good, I would say. Uh, they yeah, they did a really good job here. I'm I'm really happy with the song. It's not it didn't make my list, but you know it was one of my alternates. Yeah, it's a it's very smooth, dreamy, got some trap inspiration to it. Um, I, I've mentioned this artist in the past, but Cashmere Cat always comes to mind with this style of trap music, where it's like mm-hmm. bedroom trap, right? Where it's like serenading, and they just want you to feel a kind of way, um, and really just like kind of float in in your thoughts um jackson i've been a big fan of jackson for a minute um ever since he kind of did solo stuff even while he was at in got seven um really cool to see 
him singing here. Um, and it feels like it does, he has bought in a lot of his solo like, efforts and skills and talents into this release um, a lot more than when he used to be part of GOT7, right? So like in GOT7, definitely part of, uh, subject to the the creative process of the company, right? Where Jackson had his parts, he rapped, but didn't get the same type of focus. Now it feels like they're all doing what they want to do. I just repeated what you said, but <laughs> in, in a really like, I don't know, a really genuine way, I, I guess is the best way to put that. So yeah. Um, yeah, I am. Um... I was just going to say, one of my favorite Jackson quotes is when he said, I, I'm not a rapper. I'm just a guy who was told to rap. <laughs> he said that on the show. so right. Yeah. He's... <laughs> oh my God. That, if that phrase doesn't encapsulate Honestly, his yeah. career in K-pop up to this point, <laughs> oh man, that is perfect. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, Jackson's great. Um, yeah. If you're a fan of just like Jackson and like his journey, he has a lot of interviews he's done over the past couple of years multicultural multilingual very accessible um hear him out he talks about k-pop about just being asian and um what that means as uh being an entertainer trying to hit different markets and expand to a bunch of different cultures right cool cool guy cool song chill vibes uh, just a chill month guys just super chill aside from nina's um gushing over uh 17. <laughs> All right, um, we're going to do a quick overview of the May Soju chart. Um, mm. a, a lot of movement throughout the entire month. Um, Zondi, is there anything that kind of stood out to you? Do you feel like the Psy song should have lasted a little longer, or was that just a, a one hit? No. I'm just like, oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 I, I have my reservations, so I'm, I'm happy it had its moment, but it's, it's you know... <laughs> We could talk about other things too. Well, what, what stood out to you on the chart aside from a uh, size quick departure? We, I mean, we had Woods and God Seven, like basically winning uh, over <laughs> the month. Uh, I mean, the episode one ninety had three second placers, which was always fun. <laughs> uh, all of three of which were we talked about. So, uh, I mean, there were a couple songs on here that we didn't talk about because, I mean. We probably just didn't really care to. Uh, <laughs> Mian song, which I thought was pretty nice. Good boy, Mian's... Bad, which yeah, very yeah. pleasant. Right? Uh, it's it's nice, but I I feel like I've already forgotten about it. You know, yeah. <laughs> I was like, this they're trying to be I by Taeyeon a yeah. little too hard. Uh, the NCT song I didn't really care for, so I'm a hard I'm a hard please, but no, yeah. you're you're fine. <laughs> uh, we. We just collectively didn't really care for NCT. Is what it seemed like. I think uh, I think it was fine. I'm not a fan of NCT Dreams rapping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't like it when they rap. <laughs> I like it when they sing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Great singers. Um. But uh, Jamin and Jenna especially. Mm. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> sorry. Sorry to the Dream fans out there. They're great kids. <laughs> Great, not yeah, rappers yeah totally. just just guys that were told to rap <laughs> well, let's quickly like talk about nct dream and beatbox so yes i think the rap is the part that like, like separates that song for me or it's like okay they're just doing the nct thing but when they sing they really capture like the concept of like we're in high school we're young youthful kids so to me i kind of feel like they should have just sang more Mm -hmm. Right? Am I crazy? Yeah. No, no I mean, I'm with you. Yeah. I definitely would have liked it more if there was more singing. Yeah. Same here. Um, did you feel like you were in the 90s? <laughs> in the video? Uh, I mean, it, it's, you know, I, I do like a 90s, but we're, we're getting a lot of it. Um, yeah. The, like the music video was cute and fun. I, I like Mark Lee a lot. I think he's a really funny dude. Um, yeah. Is Mark Lee I ever just, going to age out of Dream, or have they decided he's just going to be in every entity? So, he did. They actually, he graduated, um, and the fans rioted so much, they brought him back. So now they've said that this is the fixed Dream. Um, I believe they said, like, they might, you know, do comebacks without members, which makes sense, because Mark and Hei-chan, I can't imagine being in two 
boy groups at once, essentially. That's insane to me. Um, but yeah, no, they they had he had a graduation ceremony and everything, and then they brought him back. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's just like I, 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 I don't know. I, I have mixed feelings about the fact that he's back. Like, I get the NCT <laughs> fans like love him and stuff, but just like yeah, the thing that separated I, NCT was the fact that like you graduated, went into the other like, <laughs> stages of your life. And I mean, he seems like he's in good spirits, but I, I really just cannot imagine how tiring it is to be in two K-pop boy groups. Yeah, come on, don't <laughs> I mean, forget about three. Super M. Yeah, and like he, they toss him in NCTU all the time yeah, as well. Yeah, it's like, NCT man, U. yeah, insane. Being in one K-pop group is too much work already. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where I land with it. It's like I, I, I wish yeah. Mark was just in Dream, <laughs> right? And it's just like, just leave him there. No, I want him to be in One Two Seven. <laughs> and Super M. And, 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 and Wavy? I like that's him. That's not a thing. No, it's not, it's not Wavy. Yeah. Thanks for me. But yeah, I think interesting song. Um, I, I'm curious if that'll stay for, for the crew in June um, because they did talk about that song quite nicely. Um, and I do feel like the Lightsome song got some extra push because it was the only girl group song we got since the I thought that as well. <laughs> it's you know, it's a good song, okay, but let's not forget about VBZ. <laughs> well, we just need to. We just need to. When the vote comes out, we'll just put that at one, regardless if that's yeah. you know able to be nominated. Yeah, I, mean, I, I do that. <laughs> I don't people. think that uh, Nana Na would have triple crowned in another month. You know. It's I don't kind think of like, it would have triple crowned in June or July. No, no. It's you know it's a good song, but it's um it you know empty house and all that. <laughs> yeah, totally agree. Yeah, well, that was a uh, May in Soju Talk music. Let us know what you think, Holler. Um, Biff Millet, you're there. Hi, we miss you. We love you. <laughs> all right we're, we're gonna get into it now everyone the queendom 2 overview recap we're just gonna do an entire season <laughs> 10 episodes of just you know our thoughts our feelings um Dondi, since since you kind of led with the with vvz earlier uh, lead us here um what are your favorite moments of the entire show um favorite stages and you know you, you kind of touched on the finale already but what did you think about the finale um yeah i mean it's it's hard to 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 talk about because so much has happened since we love to talk about it <laughs> uh favorite moments when the top two were announced that was that was a highlight for me i enjoyed that it was very stressful but i enjoyed it very much you know, the okay. final round of performances was also nice oh wow Sorry, no, you mean no, no, go ahead, keep going. Yeah, keep going. Oh, uh, I mean, I could talk about highlights, I think I have like a top five favorite performances from the show, but like, uh, uh, I'll let you guys go on, Nina. What what was your favorite performance? My favorite performance, hmm. Let me think. (laughs) The I, I feel like the the final performances were all quite good. Um, I thought everyone did really well, which was great. Um, hmm. <laughs> I, I really liked Luna's Butterfly, actually. Um, I thought that was just like very... Uh, Butterfly is not... I don't like it as much as some Luna fans do. Some Luna fans really, really like Butterfly. Um, but I don't know, that that performance was like kind of getting me emotional. Um, and I think Luna are very good dancers, especially as a group. Uh, so I really enjoyed that. Um, generally, like overall, my vibe was just kind of like poor Kepler, poor brave girls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you know, I, Luna and Cosmic Girls, like they did great all the way through. VVZ was always kind of in the middle, and yeah, it kind of felt like I, I, I don't think Kepler should have been on the show. I'm sure that's not a unpopular opinion um but yeah it just feels bad like they just debuted they should be doing other things and i don't think this was the best move for their career (laughs) and they all seem really uh just really beaten down by the end so felt bad felt felt kind of bad (laughs) but it's definitely i think it was a really good experience especially for luna cosmic girls and bbz um 
And Hyorin. Yeah. I feel like her career got revitalized from that. Yeah, I think she announced a comeback, actually. Mm-hmm. So that's that's good. <laughs> and the, the final voting was definitely um, disadvantageous for Hyorin. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't have the, the rabid fandom that some of these other groups do, you know? Um, and that was the issue with Brave Girls as well. Their fans are mostly, like, men in their 30s. Um, who aren't gonna vote as crazily as you know Luna fans or Cosmic Girls fans or G Friend fans? Um, so yeah, that that final voting it, it it really it came down to who had the most rabid fan base a little bit. <laughs> um, which and I mean Cosmic Girls do good for them. <laughs> yeah, it was I had to be had that, that finale. Um, favorite moments for me. Um, I'm just gonna be a simp here. Hold my hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Anha and um, Subin and Yunjin. My God, that was good. Yeah, I, yeah, that was good. I, I, well, first of all, like the entire lead, the lead up until that point was Anha was like struggling with singing and she couldn't find friends. Nobody wanted to be in her group, and then she just takes <laughs> takes over. It's like I got this, guys. And it's Subin who's struggling the most and just like kind of finding her way, uh, which is great for character building. It's like I think. If you didn't know Uji Sonia before or just uh, kind of a casual fan, um, you got to know her a lot. The fact that she could sing and the fact that it's like Ayu. It's like, yes, all, all three things, please. Can I have them more? Um, that definitely my favorite moment. The, I, 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 I do want to touch on Kepler a little bit. I, I feel for them in the fact that they had this youthful energy where it's like, we're just happy to be here. We're going to be respectful to all our elders. Um, we're going to take everything as positive um, and constructive criticism. But then like the reality of the votes playing out the way they did, just the response from the, the audience, um, because it is a competition show, you do have to kind of uh, accept that you, well, them as a group uh, have to are going to be ranked relative to everyone else that's just tough especially for like 17 year old 16 year old yes so i don't mm. know man it's like was this the best position for them with all the young children on that group i don't know um they they're pretty recognizable so i understand why mnet would do it also i understand why mnet would do it yes mnet good job um or not good job probably terrible job um but i can think of at least two other groups that could have worked um if JYP would have had them, Itzy would have been great. But I don't think they were doing anything at this moment. Oh, Itzy would have ate Itzy the other would have girls. Crushed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it would have. It, it, I, I feel like it would have maybe not balanced, but, but like extremely competitive, like to the point where I would be so confused as to what would happen on the final stage, right? And you know, Kepler too. I like we were saying as much as I didn't like their finale song, I they performed their hearts out. Like mm-hmm. I, I think they they did. You know, <laughs> I think they did well, um, and hopefully, you know, they don't feel too bad because <laughs> I, I do think they did really well despite the results. Um, and you could even see their growth a bit throughout the show as well. Um, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, to that end, as far as Kepler and Brave Girls, you know, they definitely struggled throughout the show. Towards the end, they both I feel like they both came into their own quite a bit, especially Brave Girls. Less so Kepler, but I, I thought their performance of the boys was so good. <laughs> uh, that was one of my favorites of that round. But obviously, Brave Girls uh, and Ji doing Tell Me Now and the, the vocal performance which with Min Young and Hyorin, a lot of people liked, apparently. I guess it's a live <laughs> show thing. Uh, their final performance I also thought was really good. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I was really happy for them. I felt like they got so massively screwed over a bunch of times and uh it was just really good for them to to have those moments later on in the show yeah I think- uh, one thing i do want to speak about oh go on crispy no go ahead oh i i just wanted to talk about how uh, how happy i am that <laughs> that young and is now an honorary luna member <laughs> uh she she uh, like uh, we talk about Kepler you know they had struggles but a lot of their members really stood out in the show for me Youngin and Hikaru especially yeah talking uh, about favorite moments the one where I think it was Kim Lip and Chu picking Youngin up from school oh my god that was so, so cute, cute. <laughs> so cute you know at the end of the day at least they made friends 
That's exactly. the most important thing, right? It's all about the friends they made along the <laughs> yeah, way. Yeah, it's about the friends so you made true. along the way. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's all about the journey, right? Um, mm. Yeah. Just going to kind of go into is a close coupler. Um, I think they definitely got better at the end. Um, Ikuru is definitely the standout for me. I'm so happy that they gave her things, even if the songs weren't like great, but like that song is for her, right? It's like, yeah. it's this crazy like girl crush, like aggressive song. Like that's what she was so good at in Girls Planet 999. And then they didn't do that for Wadada at all. So it's just like, here, here, you are the center. You are doing all the things. Um, I think the, the dance line is pretty cool. Um, Ayan, Ikaru, and Chen Chao Ting. Uh, they, mm-hmm. they they are good at dancing. Yes. Yeah, I think Diane really showed off her chops here. Like she's uh, really really good on stage. Yeah. She she really gives off leader vibes <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> when you're watching the dance practices and things. Like that girl is serious. She can't. She did not come here to mess around. <laughs> yeah, I I really like how technically sound her and Hikaru are as far as like going back and forth with like the creative process between like leading and then when they were um collaborating with VVZ. Just like being there for MG, it's like that. That's good. Uh, we, we love that. Um, Brave girls. So voting sucks. I don't understand why people didn't understand the first two stages because I love them. Uh, but well, I I, I want to know your opinions on how the hell they got like number one in that last stage, the the one before the finale. Like what happened? It was pity oh, votes. It was just yeah. Pity it was yeah. it was cry votes. Yeah. Yeah, they, was, they took their hearts right. This is a video of us struggling a lot. Yeah. And now we're here. Yeah. And we've been struggling a lot. And also, if we lose this round, we are going to be kicked off the show. So yeah. please, 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 yeah. please, please, please vote for us. <laughs> That's all I it mean, was. it worked. <laughs> yeah, it worked. I don't, I don't blame them for it. <laughs> yeah, we did get a good story from them. I'm glad that people at least were cogniz- cognizant enough to like allow those stories to work because if that didn't work, then people are just like not watching the show. Even if you're in like the audience, um, I-, mm. I was rooting for them because I, I like them. I-, I-, I think musically they're pretty good. So it would be a shame if they got kicked off the show. Um, but I didn't think to the degree of like first place, everything <laughs> like, okay, I guess we're doing this. It's fine. They're, they're still here. We're good with that. Uh, I mean, you you don't cried at the end. How can you not vote for her after you see those big eyes? <laughs> was just like, I'm like, wow. He has got big eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that well placed set of emotions <laughs> there. I will say for her. Um, yeah, I I think Brave Girls did well overall. My biggest complaint at been constant with Brave Girls is their stylist needs to be fired. Oh, <laughs> they're you know i mean i get they're 30 year old women but it's like their stylist doesn't know how to make them look cool or put them in anything that's flattering to their bodies or oh i hate it i hate it <laughs> the the red sun performance they had the i mean i know they did like the transformation into the glass slippers or whatever but the black boots with like the flower dresses with the glued on plastic eh, yeah oh, i could go all day about brave girl stylists <laughs> they need to be fired <laughs> just hire you yeah. <laughs> you apply? I mean, you're really good at like applying to Queendom stuff because you did get a uh, invitation. Uh, yeah, I did. Didn't get to go though. But yeah, it's uh, I I think I could do a better job than their current style. <laughs> Gosh, um, They're well, already fighting ageism in the industry, yeah. and then they have to be dressed in stuff that's like just not cool or flattering at all. <laughs> Yeah, they, they were definitely weren't given the. Uh, I mean, you, I mean, you can tell the kind of taste that the company has by the fact that every time they have a shot inside their studio, you have to see four Iron Man suits. <laughs> it's so incredibly painful on the eye. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a very busy office. Oh, let's see. Um, talk about the final performance. So, talk about Brave Girls a bit. Um. I want to talk about their outfits because we have the the professional here. <laughs> uh, all right, the one outfit that stood out to me that was which is like really good was Yuna's, and she got the beach wear. Um, how, how do you feel like these outfits played out for you? I mean, they were dancing without shoes. <laughs> like, shout out to them. Um, did that work? I hated them. 
<laughs> Tell me more. I hated Yunus. Go, 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 go deep. Why did you hate them? Why it was the these, main, these atrocious? My outfits? main issue is that they're just out of style. Like they're giving 2013 to me, and you know that's like because I used to work as a merchandiser for Forever 21. So at the time, I was very into trends and everything like that so i mean it's not that they necessarily look bad or ugly like the girls are beautiful but it's just out of fashion it's <laughs> they look old-fashioned they look like I'm, I, I'm, yeah i'm watching the stage now I, I, <laughs> it, everything you're saying keep going please <laughs> <laughs> i think it makes them look older because i you know i don't think 30 is old it, it is in the k-pop world unfortunately especially for a woman um, so yeah, having them look kind of like tacky and out of style is not helping their public opinion. <laughs> yeah, I, I think these, these fits are, again, you know, it's, it's nothing against the girls. They're just out of style. <laughs> I, I appreciate your point of view. I, I am a man who does not know fashion, so I am just here. I'm just here. Yeah. Uh, Zombie, any fashion advice that you can give me to help me out of this hole? <laughs> no, but if we're talking about final performances, my favorite one by far was Luna's Pose. Which, I mean, a lot of people have their reservations about the song, uh, and I can see them. Zombie said, anyway, let's talk about Luna. <laughs> I fucking did. Look, look. Um, <laughs> I want to talk about Pose. Fashion wise, these outfits are on trend. <laughs> yeah, they're. they're very well done. I like denim. <laughs> yes. I like yeah. the part like halfway through where they put caps on. I'm a big <laughs> fan of a hat. Heejin throws it into the crowd and I wish I caught it. Heejin's too cool for me. She's just too cool. So when cool. when Cherry uh, threw the cap in the air and caught it, I was like, wow, she's so cool. <laughs> I have a question about Chori. I'm calling her that because I suck. Yeah. Um, has she always been this cool? No. She's gotten cooler for oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Cooler, yeah. <laughs> because did she transform in this show? Because I was like, what? The hell? She's like in the dance unit, and then she's doing this. It's like, what? Do, who are you? And I do it's, I it's like you? It's been a fairly recent development, but she yeah. is definitely cool now. I also she was not cool in the past. Y- Yojin. <laughs> yeah. That kid. She's, she's going for it. Yeah. <laughs> like she was a child at the beginning of Luna, and now she's just cool <laughs> it's crazy i feel like i watched her grow up <laughs> mm, yeah gosh luna is just yeah I, i'm uh, yeah but... i'm very, very happy with how they did this show I it's kind of like what i was saying up. um about 17 too where they're all really good performers really good dancers it's, it's amazing when you have a big group like this and they all have charisma and they can all dance and they yeah it's just it's wow where'd you find these girls <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, Hassel, hot. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, if we're talking about <laughs> the, the individual members, Kim Lip and Pink. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, very, Jin very... Soul did a really good job not winking that last performance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it was. Uh... I, I'm going to throw my proverbial um, Eve is everything. But there mm-hmm. you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Mm-hmm. Yunjin, I thought, also had a really good like she she had a lot of airtime uh, for the final performance, which was really nice to see. I feel like with the kind of uh, more girl crushy concepts that Luna's been doing, she's kind of shone a bit less. Mm. Uh, but here, she's had she's been given a lot of time to to kind of you know be at the forefront, and I think she's done a good job. My my one yeah. thing about them throughout the show is that there was like four members that they gave a lot of attention to. Uh, there are twelve members. Can, can we get a little bit more of some other friendly <laughs> folks? Um, Welcome to Luna. Yeah, just, unfortunately, man, that's uh, just how it is. I'm a I'm a go on liker, and uh, yeah. did you see the, her in the, the show? <laughs> the go on and VV likers. Yeah. yeah, if you didn't know Luna, I don't think you know who those people are. No. Wait, actually, I mean, when my friends and I... You just want you know, like, there's yeah. members that you would not know existed. Oh, definitely, yeah. If you just watch the show. Um, when my friends and I were watching this final performance, actually, my friend went, oh, Vivi's here. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cosmic Girls, and Cosmic Girls was a bit, um, especially in this episode, kind of the XE show a little bit, which, definitely. you know, we, we like XE, but um, 
if you were a fan of maybe one of the other girls, you might be. <laughs> yeah. yeah, their their whole edit actually leading up was just it, like, wow, we really like Xy. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's her as the super producer, but then like everyone yeah. else uh, did interviews of just how much she means to them. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> It's just the XE appreciation hour. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm an XE bias, so I'm good. But at the same yeah. time, I was like, this is a little excessive. <laughs> yeah. Um, what did you guys um, think about Cosmic Girls throughout the show? Uh, pantomime. I want to talk about pantomime <laughs> if I get a chance. Yeah. Which it wasn't one of the final performances, but we haven't talked about it. So we have to. Go for it. <laughs> what, what did you think it, about it's, pantomime? Uh, well, it's, you know, not only is it one of the best songs that's ever been made, mm-hmm. uh, they finally got to perform it, which I think is amazing. Uh, the stage is one of my favorites from the show. Uh, they did such an amazing job, and I also like how they spinned. That's all I have to say. <laughs> it was um, it was a little funny towards the end, I found. Like, I before I saw the performance, actually, I, I got a TikTok of, like, that last 30 seconds, and it's, like, everything at once. <laughs> Like yeah. the belting, the spinning. So good. It's so funny. The like they're, they're like, we're gonna do, we're gonna do everything, everything all, all at once. <laughs> yeah. It was very like show tunes Broadway, where it's like the finale yeah. of just like get all the extras on stage and do something <laughs> mm-hmm. and do spinning. The girls are in the air. The girls are screaming. <laughs> it's so funny, but I love yeah. it. I love the yeah. performance. <laughs> Yeah, um, I yeah. I mean, they they won the show by consistently getting second. Yeah, they didn't have a bad performance, but I also Very feel like other than pantomime, they didn't really have a huge standout. I guess hold my hand. I mean, that's two members, right? Yeah, uh, it's interesting how that played out on the final, on the finale, right? Because um, I I think their final stage was our aura, um, very well executed. You know, you could it was just an amazing like piece of choreography. But I mean, they cut to like the reactions of some people. They were just like more focused as opposed to like excited and hyped. So I, mm-hmm. yeah, I, yeah, it wasn't my favorite out of the fan. Like it wasn't bad, um, but it wasn't a standout. I would say. Yeah, which is that's how I feel. Yeah, yeah, and the finale was like the determining factor of like how the winner was chosen so i i don't it was the determining factor yeah yeah, yeah so I, yeah just I, look I, at hyolin hyolin I mean, first place all the way through and ends up i think fourth yeah. was it yeah fourth. fourth yeah um yeah I, I don't really know how to explain it because i'm mean, we're all seeing it on a screen and that's where a lot of the votes <laughs> are coming from and then if you're telling me the audience is seeing something different i, I don't know <laughs> what they're seeing um again great performance um very well executed. It's just fandom votes. Yeah. yeah. Like, Luna has a, a lot of people. Uh, Cosmic Girls fans are better at voting than uh, Luna yeah. fans. And also Fair Luna enough. Luna won the on-site votes. Mm. Uh, Luigi won the streaming votes, I believe. And they were okay. also helped by them having points from the first round. Yeah. Okay. Which I, I don't really want to get into because there's a lot of angry orbits. Yeah. Like, I'm already annoyed at them, so... Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't agree with the way some Luna fans are acting, but I do get the frustration because Luna only lost by 3,000 points. Mm-hmm. So if they had gotten any points at all that first round, they would have won. And I mean, and that's not, you can't, the fact that people are blaming Cosmic Girls for that is ridiculous. It's, if anything, you should be mad at COVID. Um, but I get that it's frustrating. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, that that hurts <laughs> because it was something totally out of their control. Yeah. Uh, something I did enjoy was uh, when Uji Sonia voted for Luna's Butterfly as the worst performance, <laughs> and then Jin Soul was like, "Well, well actually, it's because our song didn't really have high notes, uh, and uh, you know, it's called vibrato, is, honey." It's, it's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> our song was in falsetto. Great. I love her. She's so funny. <laughs> that was so good. Yeah, I love Jin Soul. Yeah, yeah. Jin Soul's so funny. <laughs> but yeah even like seeing the like the selfies of the girls hanging out after you know it's like at least at least there was friendship at the end of the day <laughs> Sola and Eve. yeah yeah that's a good uh that one's for the gays for sure mm-hmm. <laughs> um i appreciated that they continuously went to sunbi and 
That's like yeah, their, yeah me their, too. Their go to relationship the entire <laughs> show, even at the very end. I think it was what's the guy's name? The guy, the male host. Ah, or someone. Yeah, I could not tell you. Literally brought it up. It's like, and your best friend Insu. It's like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> really. It's just written in the script now. Got it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. A, a lot of great relationships and friendships, either um, accentuated or um, came together. Um, I think that's like the the big winner of the show, right? Because they're all gonna get their comebacks. But now it's just like, how do they grow creatively? Friendships and what are the Instagram photos that we're going to get in the future to <laughs> pine over? So, yeah, just super happy. And shout out to the gays, gay month. I would like to personally <laughs> shout out uh, Luna Shake It for doing so well because now yes. we have Bright Concept for Luna. Uh, yep. That's their next comeback. Thank you. Proof Thank you very of much. Concept. Shout right? <laughs> Please. Please, I beg. Please don't yeah. give me another girl crush song. Yeah, I was I was sharing that uh, that teaser image with my friends. I was like, this has to be bright, right? Like, it has to be. It has to be. <laughs> please, please, I mean, please, if, please, if please. You please. count Pose. They've done four girl crush songs in four years. <laughs> I don't, I don't. If you can't tell me now, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Although, tell me now. Great, great performance. Yeah, so I really like yeah. the um. I will say like the dance and vocal units. The ranking was exactly right for both of them. Like well, tell me now. <laughs> I have reservations about Jordan stage. <laughs> oh really? I thought I thought Pearl wasn't very good. <laughs> I thought Pearl wasn't very good either. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm I'm talking about the 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 vocal stage. Oh, the vocal. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Like Jordan and Minion stage. <laughs> when uh when they paired up, I was like, oh. Wow, Here come the high notes. Those, those are two loud, loud girls. <laughs> Perfect way to put that. Here come yeah. the belt. Loud voices. I just I found the the Luna Kepler stage was like kind of boring. Mm-hmm. I too. love yeah. that song. Don't go by EXO. I'm glad they didn't do downpour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have been cruel. Uh, I Make Young Jung cry before she has to go out on stage. It's so messed up, right? <laughs> it's so messed up. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. No, overall, very, I mean, Cosmic Girls deserve, they they put on a show. They yeah, worked hard. And then they, they got the most votes, so I guess they mm-hmm. deserve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I also would have been happy with Luna winning, you know? I would have been uh, happy with, yeah. Yeah. I I, were... I I was happy as soon as both of them were called up, like I said. Yeah. Uh, my bias, obviously, would point to the both of them, so having... Both of them on stage there, barely able to fit with the 19 members. No, 21. <laughs> nah, I can't count. You got this. I believe you. <sighs> I think it's 21. Yeah. Plus plus the two hosts. Yeah. You got, you got this. It was, uh, um, I, it was a good time. I, I like that VVZ got third. Yes. I yes. was just like, wow, finally. <laughs> <laughs> getting like the vote made sense for them um yeah, when people kept putting vvz as like bor- worse than their team i was like what what are you guys <laughs> are you, like, not i feel like you know they instantly regretted when they saw it in those face after yeah. doing that though so i guess it's karmic <laughs> justice I think that, uh, um yeah i think uh, to me unhus and the mvp of this entire show yeah, she was a standout for sure. Every reaction from her was perfect. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's it, right? We're, we're, uh, yeah, else? yeah. We kinda, know. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really good time. <laughs> One of my favorite ten week periods of my life, I will say. Yeah, it was a really, really good batch of girls, yeah. and you know, yeah. I like Kepler. I, <laughs> this show I, helped me appreciate Kepler a yeah. lot more. I will say, you know, their music it hasn't been standout, but very cute but girls. The girls are very cute. <laughs> yes, yeah. Same. Youngun is very quickly become one of my favorite members. Yeah, I really like. I think Youngun's got like main vocal, main dancer, entertainer. You know, she's just she's got it all. Reactions. So yeah. Funny. Reaction queen. Yeah, she's, she's, she's a good kid. Definitely future leader of a group after this. Mm. Yeah, she kind of has everything. Full package. 
All right, uh, moving into closing thoughts. Uh, we're just going to do some life recaps. Um, we're going to start easy and cute and relaxed. So, um, <laughs> Nina, what has come into your life recently that is incredibly adorable? Yeah, I've become a mother. I... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, my uh, my roommate slash uh, my platonic life partner and I um, adopted a cat last month. Um, he's the sweetest boy in the entire world. We'd actually been looking for a cat for a while and we weren't having much luck. Um, I figure with the pandemic and everything, everyone in the world has been adopting a cat. Um, so one day we were um, on the SPCA website, the local animal rescue, and saw that the SPCA that was about an hour away from us had a ton of cats. And we said, let's go. So we got in the car and we drove there and they told us that almost all of their cats had been adopted the day before. This is on a Saturday. And they were like, yeah, actually, we don't have that many left. Um, but they did have one boy who had like today was the day that we were there was the first day that he was available for adoption because he'd had health issues. Um, he is FIV positive, which is the like HIV for cats. Um, but it doesn't, all it means is that his, um, immune system is, you know, we have to be careful not to let him get sick. FIV positive cats can live long and healthy lives. He just can't be around other cats. So, and he had had, um, a respiratory disease as well, but he had just recovered, been given the clean bill of health from the vet. And we said, okay, we'd, we'd like to meet him. And he is just the sweetest, cuddliest boy. He cuddled with my roommate the entire drive home. Um, we're just, we're so obsessed with him. <laughs> oh, like Walter. Walter, I my little Walter. boy. Yeah. <laughs> he's so cute. He's so sweet. He loves to cuddle. You know, as soon as you sit down, he's right there trying to rub his face up against yours. And I just didn't know I could love a cat this much. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm obsessed can, with him. You can love a cat this much. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. getting so many, so many feelings <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> um nina showed me a photo of walter um if you would like to see it just ping her she'll post it everywhere we'll be we will allow this. i'll show you so many pictures of walter if you want to see him oh <laughs> um, amazing story i just so, I'm so happy one that like you you rescued a cat that you know is a little older so typically they don't get adopted um mm -hmm. and that too that walter is everything oh my God. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, you're going to have a lot of um, emotional support for however many decades <laughs> you have, Walter. Hopefully, to, he'll outlive you. That, that's the goal. Yeah, right? the, our vet said he's in great health. He said everything looks great, and he's full of energy. Like he runs around like a little kitten. So yeah, we're <laughs> yeah. He looks like a kitten. He's eight. He's yeah. Like, oh my. God. Yeah, he's eight. He's quite small. He's only I think eleven pounds. He's a small boy. And they found him on the streets. It's unbelievable. I can't believe it. <laughs> Still can't believe it. <laughs> Would you say Walter is the the woozy of your household? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's he owns this apartment now. Um he runs the place. Owns a king. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh Zondi, now we've 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 set it up some, for some wholesome <laughs> conversation now uh tear us down with your escapades over the past week weeks what did you what have you been up to in these evenings i had exams so i've been studying for those and i've been playing a lot of valorant and slay the spire and nothing else nothing else nothing else mm -hmm. <laughs> no no um alcohol consumption in public no, no um <laughs> text messaging of a number of people a specific number. Zondi of actually, people. he doesn't drink at all. Yeah, he's never he's never drank before. Um, That's a fun fact about Zondi. <laughs> well, if you've never, if, if you do eventually drink, hypothetically, if you were a, a, ever a drinker, um, you know, ten people to text how much you love them and miss them is is a pretty good number. It's pretty representative of just like the variety. Well, I'm, I'm of people. more of a I'm more of a caller person. <laughs> oh, very personal. You know, they definitely get to hear your voice, uh, especially when you leave a voicemail and they can get to it later. So, you know, I also got a message. So I guess he was completely sober when he uh, was telling me and Biff how much he loves us. <laughs> I do that all the time, though. Like... He, does, he does do it. He does actually do that often. <laughs> oh, he's a, just a lovable little guy, our Zondi. Oh, oh, he's, he's woozy. <laughs> yeah. I've just been studying for exams, man. I don't know what you're talking about. 
<laughs> yeah, Zondi's definitely the woozy. <laughs> Zondi's such a woozy. Um, best of luck for your exams. What's the schedule for yes. exams? Are you is this end of year? Oh uh, yeah, I've got my last two Tuesday and Wednesday, and I'm done oh. for the year. Good luck. Almost there. Yeah, in oh. summertime. Um, <laughs> only thing for me in life, um, it is Saturday, June fourth. I'm seeing Wu Sung in a couple hours. Oh, he's in. Oh, released a song this month. He did oh, we didn't talk about his song. Um, Sorry, Wu Sung. I, I know. I totally <laughs> forgot. I actually really liked the album. Uh, phase me very artistic and creative. I would do it real quick. Very artistic expression. Yeah. Very cool. Very fitting of like the moth motif. Um, I liked Side Effects, his other song, better because that's about um, uh, not being in a relationship anymore, but then having withdrawal symptoms as if you were on drugs. Hi, that is my life. <laughs> um, so seeing him tonight. Uh, and then the other thing I'm super excited to have acquired is a Luna ticket. One, oh. lo- one Luna oh my ticket. God. I- I'm going Congrats. solo. Um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, the venue in San Francisco doesn't have seating. So I just have to get. I've there. seen pictures. It's yeah. small. Like ten. Is, is, that the, is that the is that the gentle stand up? Yeah, gentle stand up yeah. comedy tour. Yes, yeah. yes. I yeah. I have to get there way early. I have to take the day off because it's wow. a Thursday. So I will just. I'll be. I've already told some of my coworkers. I, I'll take a half day or something. I oh. heard San Francisco was really hard to get tickets for as well. So <laughs> good job. Thank you. Thank you. Or was it? Was it San Francisco or LA? Anyway, a, a lot of places. It was a bloodbath. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the ticketing sites that had seats, assigned seats, was just mm. ridiculous. Ah. Yeah. Um, I think San Francisco was one of the okay ones, but then I just now have to plan to be there way early. <laughs> That's my life. Um, guys, we made it another month. Amazing. <laughs> Honestly, I can't Great thank work. you guys enough for just like doing this and just wanting to hang out. It's just We just, good stuff. We love it. It's one of the highlights of my month. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, Zondi, how you feeling? Any any uh, any parting words for everyone? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, can I talk about IU? <laughs> <I'm> kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the answer is always yes. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, well, hopefully IU has music this year, and we can actually talk about her. Um, I, I highly recommend her episode of Palette with Seventeen. It's very cute, and she does a cover of Darling that's very, very nice. She's is... been promoting her movie. Really yes. Fun. I actually really want to see that movie, uh, Broker. It sounds yeah. really good. Yeah. Um, she's getting really great reviews, so that's our queen. <laughs> I was just like said, all in our lives all the time. She's, yeah, princess. <laughs> queen. Queen of the world. <laughs> She could looked gorgeous at Con Film Festival. Yeah, she looked amazing at Con. Yeah. Yeah, those dress. Yep. Those, those those various outfits because she had a couple of them, right? It was like the mm-hmm. it was white green. What color is that, Nina? It's it, it, green hue, very light, right? <laughs> I don't know. You're the fashion person. Tell me what was that dress? <laughs> it was great. Um, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Closing thoughts. We love IU. A lot. A lot, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> no. A lot, a lot. Um, perfect way to end. All right. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for listening to the Soju Talk Nation podcast, episode 47. Subscribe on YouTube, follow on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts, and continue the conversation on the Soju Talk K-pop podcast Discord this has been the Soju Talk Nation for the beautiful, soulful, um, heartwarming, cat-adopting human being, Nina, and the driven, motivated, incredibly focused, intelligent, and will eventually be the CEO of something that I will work for person, Zondi. I'm Crispy, and this has been the Soju Talk Nation. Bye! <laughs>